first of all, thank you very much uh, for inviting me on. It's a um, uh, it's a great pleasure and uh, uh, new people uh, to talk to and uh, uh, present uh, uh, my journey. And uh, also, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, meeting everyone uh, uh, online and later uh, face to face. Um, so when Claude asked me to present, uh, she said, what title should I give? Um, should I give this journey? And uh, I come from Tripoli, north of Lebanon, and I always thought myself as um, a little uh, Darwish coming from the city. Um, the photo here is um, is the view from uh, my living room. Oh. So I grew up looking. Uh, um, it's it's uh, it's foggy because I think um, this is how a migrant remembers uh, their uh, home. Uh, in a foggy state, but this is the view I grew up with, looking down uh, the Kadisha River, traversing Tripoli, uh, splitting it into two sides, down to the Mediterranean on a clear day, I could see the port, and uh, you can see um, the uh, the famous St. Gilles Castle. Uh, so I, to me, I grew up in really, um, uh, uh, a magical city, even though it was during the, uh, the the civil war. To me, Tripoli was just magical. Something out of um, um, Thousand and One Nights, and this is how I remember it. Uh, so this is uh, these are some photos. That... I think I think people need to. The screen, we can hear you talking. The screen, we can, can hear you. Can you go on mute, please? Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, so this is these are traditional photos from the Tal, from the Kak in Tripoli, from the famous uh, uh, Ahwit Fahim. And this is my cherished uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Lebanese ID. <laughs> um, it's it's um, it's magical, and I like and uh, I wanted to present it to you. In um, uh, the slides are moving. The slides are moving. Yes. Okay. Uh, I wanted to present it to you in uh, uh, the painting of um, uh, a, a, a painter from Tripoli, uh, Orhan Baba, who documented uh, every aspect of the old city. And you can see the old Khans, how really before the flood of 1951, Tripoli almost resembled Venice, a city on the river. Mm -hmm. uh, it was such a, and I, uh, I grew up in, in, the, in the 70s uh, um, and I had a glimpse of the glorious, the last the glorious phases of the city. Uh, this is how it is in my mind, always beautiful. Always, um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, magical. Uh, so, in terms of uh, my early life, uh, I was born in 1969. Uh, these are the early photos from. Um, this is me at I think a birthday at two years at age of two years, and this is uh, another photo of me with my uh, two sisters. So I'm the youngest of eight. You can see all the sisters here, but two brothers have already gone away by the time I was uh, uh, two years of age. I think the most significant um, uh, aspect or uh, event in my life was um, that I was born uh, with an uh, immune problem. Uh, it was diagnosed as a, um, uh, a juvenile arthritis, it's called juvenile idiopathic arthritis, which affected my eyes, my lungs, uh, my skin, and my joints. And uh, uh, I, I think I was strugg uh, struggling from an early, early age. And then by the time, by age of 10, finally, I was properly diagnosed at the American University of Be uh, Beirut and, mm -hmm. uh, and started on proper treatment. Uh, the other thing is I've attended um, a school outside my cities, and and I 
to me, this was uh, the first estrangement experience. Uh, this is, uh, it's, it was a secular city. It was in the Kura district where kids came from all over North Lebanon. And it was um, a great way to meet people from every region, every faith, and uh, a good uh, uh, sample of what Lebanon, before it really fragmented by the civil war, the civil religious or sectarian war was. So um, I think I'm, I'm from the lucky generation who was able to see Lebanon before, um, yeah, the sorry state it is now. And this is me. I just picked some uh, main stages from uh, early life. Uh, this is me in 1983 in London when my father uh, gathered all the money he had to send me for eye surgeries. And, and I think um, <laughs> this event is uh, what made him bankrupt. Uh, so he spent all his fortune to treat me. And then um, as the war developed, I think um, migration became uh, the option for uh, uh, for my treatment or for my family to continue. Uh, like many Lebanese, we didn't really immigrate because of the war, uh, the bombing. We immigrated because of the financial strife that was the res the byproduct of the war. And this is me in the middle here, just before I left Lebanon. This was the last class. Uh, so I left Lebanon after com completing year 12. This is the last class I attended. My school was in the beautiful uh, Kura and Rasmasa. And um, uh, yeah, this is at the age at which I left Lebanon uh, to continue education and to get uh, treatment after uh, uh, everything became difficult in Lebanon. So I arrived here in Australia and uh, uh, I started, uh, if you like, uh, my tertiary education. And this is uh, the story of my academic career. So the first degree I did is in plant biochemistry and I finished, uh, completed an honors in plant biochemistry in 1993. This is uh, the young me. Whenever I look at my black hair, I think I I I, I feel like I've used to dye my hair. <laughs> and and mm -hmm. and after completing my degree, I had enough money to buy my first car. Uh, this is significant for me because few years later, uh, I've lost most of my eyesight and had to give up my driving. Uh, but I continued uh, studying, and. Uh, in 1998, I obtained a degree, a PhD in plant physiology, specializing in photosynthesis. Sadly, by that time, my mom and dad had passed away. So only my supervisor was there at my graduation. So more or less 10 years after we came, we immigrated. Um, I lost my parents and um, uh, started my journey on my own. And um, this is more or less the summary that um, uh, the chair read. Uh, I just want to uh, wanted to show it because uh, uh, just to show how long it takes for a researcher to get tenure. Here's the uh, arrow, which shows I've uh, had about almost ten years of uh, a research contract because I before I got my first tenure in 2010 as a senior researcher at the Hawkesbury Institute for the Environment. I didn't really um, pursue a teaching career. I pursued mostly um, a, a research career. So although I'm employed at the university, 90% of what I do is uh, leading a research team and gaining money and writing papers. And uh, uh, last year, I was uh, promoted to uh, a professor. So what, uh, what do I do? I specialize in photosynthesis. Uh, photosynthesis is uh, to me, and I think um, in, uh, in, in life also, is one of the most important processes on life. I call it the battery of life because this is the process that occurs in green leaves. This is where plants capture sunlight and carbon dioxide and convert it into sugar. This is the process of converting sunlight into chemical energies, the sunlight of the sun 
into sugars, which is really uh, the basis of everything, uh, the energy, we, uh, the food we eat, the food that animals eat, the energy that uh, continues to being uh, hydrocarbons. So uh, plants uh, 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 convert an inorganic uh, compound, which is uh, a single carbon compound, carbonic, uh, 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 um, uh, carbon dioxide into sugar, so it connects, uh, the, it makes this carbon-carbon bond, which is um, the basis of our life. So I study that process, I study its response to the environment and its uh, genetic regulations. Um, so I'm just going to skim through some of the main points of, uh, of my research and my work. Uh, my research is situated in um, climate change. We live in an era of the 21st century where uh, we burn uh, fossil fuels at a crazy rate from our cars, from our electricity, from our industry, from uh, uh, our travels. And this has increased uh, uh, the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And this has caused the greenhouse effect, the warming. So, and this is uh, a threatening uh, food security uh, because um, all this carbon dioxide is a substrate for the plant uh, pollution, uh, the ozone layer. Uh, so all this list of problems here, uh, rising global population, climate change in, in the form of uh, rising CO2 and rising temperatures. Also, um, the increased uh, Urbanization, the limited, uh, uh, the the limited uh, fresh water, the non-renewable fertilizers like uh, phosphorus and potassium, all of these are are now enormous threats on uh, uh, food production and and agriculture. And my work is situated in this uh, context, and my research is trying, like others to find solutions for this. So generally when it comes to plant science, the main solutions include um, improving uh, uh, crop photosynthesis, water use efficiency, drought and heat tolerance of the crops, soil nutrition, pest and disease management, and also this novelty, uh, which called protected cropping. I'm just going to focus on the main uh, bits that I do. Set this is me as a young uh, postdoctoral researcher. Originally, I was interested in the response of the natural environment, and I looked down at uh, people who do research on crops. I just wanted to do research on um, a native plant. So uh, originally, I did a lot of measurement of um, tropical uh, grasses uh, in Australia, so I traveled to Queensland and Northern Territory, and I did a lot of uh, uh, measurement there. I also um, did the measurement in the tropical savannas of Australia. Also traveled to Japan and did some measurement on the rice plantation, also to New Zealand, and I did measurement in uh, in uh, 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 in pastures. And then, I guess I I like my research progressed and uh, I wanted to uh, have more tangible or more direct uh, benefit to society. So I moved from, not that conservation issues are not important, but uh, uh, I wanted to have more, uh, to have my research to have more direct effect on people's lives. So um, uh, and I wanted to do research that impacted uh, agriculture. Agriculture went through many phases, from the manual phase to the mechanical phase. And agriculture now is in a very exciting phase where it's highly technological. There is the use of biotechnology. It's uh, moving toward more automation. Uh, we're moving toward more precision. And we're thinking about uh, low um, a carbon footprint uh, to reduce uh, its impact on um, climate change. And also we're moving into protected cropping. So the the research that I do in the last, I would say 10 years fits within this context. Um, 
I'm just going to, uh, there's no time uh, to, to explain any of this in details, but to touch briefly, um, I, I'm trying to find solution to improve uh, what we call potential uh, crop yield. So um, in, in, uh, increase um, or, or uh, have impact on the stagnating yield potential. I'm uh, trying to do research to improve um, uh, uh, heat and drought tolerance of crops so they become more resilient in the face of climate change. In particular, my research aims at finding uh, crops that use water more efficiently and the terminology is increase the water use efficiency of crops and I also do some research in uh, protected facilities or glass houses. So quickly we're going to uh, cruise uh, through these ideas, maybe one slide about each. Plants are central for the global plant, uh, global water budget. Uh, plants uh, are uh, 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 in, in addition to the fact that they are the battery of life, they are uh, uh, the vehicles by which water moves around the globe. So they extract uh, water from the soil, they evaporate it at the leaf, they create uh, the clouds, of course, in addition to direct evaporation from the soil and the oceans. But they are a big gateway for this water exchange. So if we, and, and plants and agriculture uses about 70% 70, 70 of fresh water. So a lot of the, you know, the precious water go through agriculture. So the idea is if we can find more water use, use efficient plants, then we can make an impact on, on this aspect. Um, uh, generally during the course of domestication, uh, this is from 10,000 years when agriculture started, farmers have increasingly been selecting for bigger crops, uh, crops with bigger leaves, crop, uh, uh, that can grow faster. Uh, of course, bigger crops generate bigger yield, but they also become more uh, 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 susceptible to stress. So the idea that I'm trying to, if you like, include in, in uh, modern breeding is what I call it reverse breeding. That is to go back and study plants and see what are the features that uh, can promote tolerance that breeding and domestication has left behind. And one of the ideas that I pursue with a team of researchers is to, is to go back to this idea of narrow leaves, smaller canopy, and see whether uh, it can have an impact on uh, 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 firstly water use and stress, stress tolerance. So basically the, the idea is instead of having a big canopy with spaced plants that use a lot of water, use a small plant with a small footprint, but make the plant more dense so we can maintain yield and um, uh, and uh, improve the efficiency. I do this research at the leaf level and uh, at the genetic level. So we try to understand what are the genes that control this leaf structure and also at the field level where I undertake uh, experiment in the field to test these ideas. Um, another, um, uh, uh, I want to move uh, to this slide first. Another related aspect is I'm very interested, I'm very fascinated in what control leaf size of how sometimes you have for the same plant, a small green leaf or a big, less green yellowish leaf. So it's about packaging the nutrient uh, and the photosynthetic power in the leaf. So I study this in response to uh, light shade, so sun leaves, shade leaves, but also in terms of uh, the genes that control uh, how the cells are packaged, whether they are packaged to yield to yield a, a, a big thin leaf or a small, um, uh, a small but denser leaves. Uh, another also research I'm interested in is when plants produce sugars, like any biological process, there is a feedback inhibition. So when you produce a product, even in chemical reactions, the product will go back and inhibit the reaction to slow it down. So I try to understand what are those um, 
sugar regulators, uh, or we call them the sugar signaling proteins in the plant that perceive the sugars and feedback on photosynthesis. Uh, this is uh, uh, research is done at the genetic levels. So we've identified the genes and uh, that are related to these proteins, and we try to genetically uh, overexpress them in the leaves and see the impact. So to try and ident identify, feel like try to identify the breaks on photosynthesis, perhaps we can manipulate some. So my research fits, if you like, in this general, um, you know, in the general way of uh, plant science goes, uh, some uh, genetic transformation, some work together with breeders to identify the genetic mar markers or the genes, and some work with the agronomists to uh, grow plant in the field. Lately, uh, uh, because of urbanization, uh, because of there is uh, uh, now an, uh, an increased uh, need for um, to bring back, if you like, agriculture in the in the cities where people are, and this is has been especially uh, a problem during COVID, where transportation uh, uh, networks have been disrupted. So, and because. And by 2050, 60% of people will be living in cities. Uh, people in the on the land, uh, people are leaving the land, and they want to live in uh, towns and cities. So we need to bring agriculture in the cities. And one form of doing this is to what we this area that we call protected grow uh, cropping, which is growing plant indoor, whether in glass houses, in polytunnels, in under plastic like many of um, uh, our, uh, you know, uh, Lebanese, uh, early Lebanese farmers here in Australia do, like when they grow uh, cu uh, cucumber and tomatoes under uh, plastic covering, or to the really high tech where it's totally indoors, we call it vertical farming. Uh, it's like growing plant in, inside the room and mostly used as a nursery production. So there is a lot of advantages of course and disadvantages but some of the advantages is it's um, it's an efficient way of growing plant uh, it's um, uh, it brings agriculture into cities it provides jobs for the younger gen for the newer generation uh, and uh, all these um, uh, all, all these advantages uh, so uh, what uh, my research is uh, about um, uh, like part of it is about optimizing the growth in these facilities, but mostly I'm in I'm focused on trying to develop imaging technologies for monitor for monitoring crops. So in an you know in high tech uh, uh, high tech facilities, uh, there is an increasing need to automate everything, including how f uh, growers. Uh, detect how the crop is grow how fast the crop is growing if there is an incoming uh, disease uh, the quality of the crop whether it has high sugar it's nutritious it's time for harvest so i use various imaging technologies in particular visible cameras uh, i use uh, uh, we use lidars that like sort of they uh, give you a 3d uh, view of the of of the of the canopy or the structure. I use hyperspectral imaging, which is uh, a scanning through m most of the uh, light spectrum to try and link that to crop quality and disease. Just to uh, ground this in some example, this is an example of a student of mine who used uh, just uh, a cheap uh, visible camera uh, and he, put, he built this, uh, wooden platform he ran it we run it up and down those gutters and this is a hydroponic glass house so he took images and then he analyzed these images by the way it's a, we're in the process of converting this um, uh, this uh, wooden structure into a robot now so it can go up and down and move around the glass house you know like a like a like a drone so by so this is automating uh, the platform itself and, uh, uh, sorry, automating uh, the platform itself. And uh, this is an example. Uh, what it shows here is 
uh, he did, he tried to every week uh, image the crop. And so he measured manually the height of the crop and develop a, a what we call it machine learning, but the, the term that everybody is familiar with is artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So machine learning is a, is a, a small discipline in artificial intelligence that is gaining a lot of data and, and using uh, algorithm to train a model. So we were successful in just imaging the crop and uh, uh, and determining its height. So this is some of the simple applications. Of course, we want m more applications to do with disease and, and the quality. So the last part of my talk is about uh, community, uh, the happy part, uh, community and writing. Um, I think I, there's a spelling mistake here. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, uh, my activities so far in terms of uh, writings, uh, uh, is um, in terms of the uh, community engagement uh, is to talk to high school students. Uh, this is a a, a, um, uh, a, a photo from uh, one of visits to uh, my um, to my campus from uh, a student with uh, vi vision impaired student. So I try to uh, sort of. Uh, um, feel like uh, motivation and uh, show them, uh, talk to them about other pathways of learning and promote uh, science in general. And the other part of it is work with uh, organization. This is just a photo from uh, an, an Iraqi organization I've connected with recently. Uh, yeah, and, and um, uh, anyway, so and, and uh, in terms of writing, uh, these are um, some of the projects I've so far been involved with. This is a dear uh, group of friends from Kher Jalis. Uh, we've uh, uh, spent the last almost three years actually writing our uh, migration stories, which connects with uh, your uh, this uh, your organ or your society's mission. And I'm also with another group of uh, dear friends, uh, the four of them here, trying to write my family migration stories, and. Uh, uh, I feel uh, I'm at a stage where I feel that we need to document our stories. Uh, uh, I think uh, this is uh, 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 this is uh, critical uh, to have our stories among uh, the uh, narratives, the general narratives of Australian stories. And I also have some. Uh, I double a little bit in poetry, and uh, this is me at with other uh, other uh, uh, friends at a poetry event. So this is sort of, if you like, so far my community and and writing engagement. And I want to finish uh, my talk by by uh, by with with a reflection. Uh, if I if I try to look back at what were the main moments in in my life, non academic moments, I feel. In, in 2014, when, uh, uh, like for somebody like me, uh, I thought I could never go uh, and do the pilgrimage because of my vision impairment. But in 2014, my brother and his two beautiful sisters were going and uh, they took me under their wing and I managed to do it. So I'm, this is a proud moment for me. Also, when in 2016, I stood on the most southern uh, uh, tip of uh, southern Lebanon. May God protect Lebanon and its and its south. It's also a proud moment for me. Finally, you know, uh, Lebanon is free of occupation. We can uh, all occupations. We can uh, claim it. And also, this photo of um, uh, the four sisters. Uh, it took so long for the four of us to reunite in Lebanon. It's also a milestone in anybody's uh, migration journey. And by some bizarre coincidence, I found myself on the e in Beirut on the eve of the October 2019 um, uh, uh, Saura with uh, one of my school friends uh, with, in that class that I showed you in 1987. It was such a momentous moment to reconnect with a friend and I don't know, see the unraveling of Lebanon or see a new phase of Lebanon. It just, um, I just, I'm still trying to come to terms with that moment. 
And also finally in 2019, I also, I don't know why it took me so long when I first visited the desert and I really connected with the heart of Australia. So these are my, I feel like my main moments. And now I'm a stage where finally, if you like, this is a photo of me in Shikka. For those of you who knows North Lebanon, it's a, one of the most beautiful uh, uh, coastlines in North Lebanon, swimming as a six or seven year old. And now at my uh, age, I'm 55, finally managed to move to the beach and uh, a beach suburb. And I'm contemplating, of course, I want to, I'm still an active researcher, uh, continue with my work, but I am at a stage where um, with whatever left with my life and my health and my intellect, I want to contribute back in, in, to the community and and uh, I feel like uh, sort of where I can help is in documenting its stories and uh, and I'm still uh, sort of uh, finding, if you like, my feet on how and serving uh, the community. Thank you. I hope I didn't take too long. Mm. Not at all. Mm. Not at all. It went so, very quick. So I can stop sharing, if you like? Or, yeah. Yes, thank you. That went very quick, very interesting. Would have been nice to, if we had more time to do it in more, um, you know, a broader um, way and listen to a lot more. I'm sure you've got a lot more to tell us and uh, with your journey. Um, now I think we'll open it, um, some question. I'm sure a lot of people have some question to ask. Um, Yusuf, would you like to coordinate that? Uh, yep, thank you, Munira. Thank you so much for a fascinating presentation, Ula. Uh, we are so grateful that you could give us some time to share to share your story with us. Um, I, I would like to open the floor up to questions, and if I may indulge myself, I'd like to sort of start off the questions. I think that you also do some work with Lebanese youth in Western Sydney. Is that right? Uh, I mean. This is the work with school. So this is like something that is starting now. So if you, as I said, um, I'm just at a time where I don't have time, but I'm trying to find the time. <laughs> and like I'm forcing myself to find the time and pay back the community. So uh, just sort of uh, going around schools and talking. So this is something new. And when you get to schools, do you are you talking about your research and your field Both specifically the journey and science? the research i guess yeah. and sort of yeah try to i mean as much as one can i guess inspire listen and and learn i guess yeah um okay i'd like to open it up to the rest of um the members to the people present to ask questions if you're going to ask a question because i can't see everyone on the screen can you can you click on the uh, hand up icon and that will take you um, to the front page and I can see you. Actually, it's not um, not on the bottom of, not on the screen. Uh, if you go to, hang on, it's not, you're right. I thought it would be under reactions. Oh, maybe they can just... It's next to reactions, um, Yusuf. It's, okay. On my screen, it's, it's sitting to the right of reactions. The reactions, yeah. Uh, I've got apps. And, okay, and the... well, you might need yeah. to expand your screen to see everything that's down there or click on the three dots that are at the... Um, oh, yes, on the bottom. three dots. Yep, yep. on the three dots, it says raise hand. <laughs> yeah, if you don't expand yeah. your screen, you can't see all the options. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Claude. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Ula, for a most fascinating um, journey. Thank you very much for sharing it with us. I am uh, very interested in you writing your story, your immigration story, and this is obviously what, what we do at the historical society and whether wondering whether you know you could work with us I suppose you know mm -hmm. um, 
If you looked at our website, uh, you can see there's lots of some stories being published. Um, mm -hmm. Just wondering if, if a possibility of working together in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I think we should join, join forces. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I'll be delighted to have this conversation with your society. Yeah. Thank you. That's delightful. Uh, Dr. Imad Berru? Um, maybe Emil is ready to... Uh... Emil, you want to ask your question first? Yeah. Well, really, I was going to ask the same thing as Claude. I, I think that there's a <laughs> deal of history there to be shared. I can't wait to meet you uh, <laughs> and compare notes. Being from my um, my mother was from Tripoli. It's um, a well known name of Candeluft. Or uh, oh, I love is... you. I love you already. <laughs> 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 and um, and the other name is the pharmacy Lutfi in in the Tal. Which... Ah no, don't say that. Yes, he, he was uh, my pharmacist actually in Tripoli. Really? <laughs> so um, we've got a lot of notes to compare, uh, and um, uh, I, I think I'll... their daughter was with me in school, Nadine Nadine Lutfi. Nadine and I uh... think she's in France now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, George married my cousin Claude. Anyway, look, that's not what this is about. No. But we, um, uh, I'd like through through Claude uh, to uh, have your phone number and we get together. We have a lot to share. But I was very interested also in your uh, your interest in uh, gathering the history of, of our people, uh, which we did uh, we did as a project at St George uh, Cathedral, and. Um, uh, I think that uh, you've got a great deal to contribute also with your research and academic mind. Thank you. Thank you, I'll, Emil. I'll be honoured, yeah. Dr. Derru? Yes. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm very pleased to, have, um, to be with you tonight to acknowledge and to appreciate the hard work of Ola. Uh, I knew Ola for a long time. I don't have any question to ask her because um, I've been following her as a scientist and as a community leader, if you like. And um, we appreciate really the hard work she's given. Um, uh, really, uh, the dedication is truly um, admirable. You make our team, because we work together in the cultural forum, um, our team is really on your presence is better. And um, uh, I think I don't have any more to express and to confess more than that. Mm -hmm. um, you are a great um, uh, uh, leader in our community, Ola, and in the Australian society. We are proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Very sweet of you, uh, Ahmad. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Uh, Ula, um, Anne Monsour has sent in a question in the uh, chat. Um, she's asking whether you, uh, you're aiming to publish your story and your poetry somewhere. Um, well, uh, we finished uh, the, we finished the book uh, of these nine women, and there are women from all over Lebanon and also a few other other Arab countries that are in the hand of a of an Asian to find a publisher now. So we, we are hoping whether we find a publisher or whether we self-publish, we will do it by the end of this year. We we really want to like sort of it's the aim. Uh, and we want to continue. So it will be great to continue together. Uh, this is this project arose during during COVID lockdown. Uh, and then like a whole world opened if you like uh, uh, it was, uh, yeah, sometimes out of darkness, some hope uh, comes out. And mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we want to publish it and we would like to continue it. And it would be great to sort of join, join efforts. Yeah. Um, Ula, as has been the, 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 the poetry, I don't know. I'm not sure how good, just <laughs> for fun. <laughs> Would you like would you like to read us a poem so we can oh, sort of... no. please, please. <laughs> if you've if you've got something handy there? No, no please. Um, Ula, as has already been alluded to, um, you have a fascinating story, and 
the Australian Lebanese Historical Society um, uh, uh, sort of um, uh, specializes in or tries to specialize in documenting stories such as yours and the history of the Lebanese migration to Australia uh, right from the beginning up until today. So it would be worthwhile actually teaming up and, and writing your story. Um, yeah, because uh, sort of um, it's an it's um it's an increasing awareness uh, uh, when sort of you, tr you, you we talk to the mainstream like to the other Australians, and you know and there is uh, like forever you're trying to uh, explain the ABC of Lebanese culture. Uh, there is a lot of factors, but one of them is that we don't write enough. We're mm. not we're we're not in their face enough, and other people, and after, so that's important. So that's on one hand, and on the other hand, um, uh, I feel you know our dear Lebanon is in a is in not in a good phase at the moment, and I feel that we have the responsibility uh, to document. I'm a great believer that um, uh, nations uh, store their culture and stories, and hopefully. Uh, the next generation will um, will rise up, fix Lebanon, and and they will wake up to our stories. I feel it's like we're um, so. These are the two uh, ideas, and I think maybe you you have the same. Is on the one hand is to be to to have our uh, stories as part of the general narrative. On the other hand, is um, to help Lebanon to preserve the stories of Lebanon. I feel the new generation of Lebanon doesn't understand how beautiful pre-war Lebanon was. And, and I feel we have a duty to, to preserve this. And I think this memory is outside Lebanon now because a lot of us migrated. Hmm. I, only know about, I only know about pre-war Lebanon uh, through my father who used to tell me stories about yeah. Um, how Beirut was in the 1960s um, when he went back to Australia he took uh, an Australian friend with him and his Australian friend didn't want to come back he wanted to stay there so yeah. um, it, all that is lost obviously um, it's a shame but yeah th this is this is a uh, piece of the puzzle yeah it's, I think it's our obligation as much as we can uh, is yeah is to sort of if you like um almost preserve like have a, uh, have the map of what Lebanon used to be so the next generation can rebuild it yeah that's sort of I don't know how to express it but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um Claude do you have another question or are you uh, no this was my old one. Oh yeah okay yes. um Ula uh, on behalf of the Australian Lebanese Historical Society um I'd like to express uh, my deep gratitude to you. Uh, hopefully, you know, we can meet again, uh, maybe next time face-to-face -face so that people that, uh, that um, you know, would like to meet you obviously uh, can meet you face-to-face -face and maybe have a longer presentation. Um, on behalf of the Australian Lebanese Historical Society also, and as a token of our appreciation, I'd like to present you with uh, a, a one-year membership of the ALHS, if oh, you accept. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can share some of the material that we produce with you and uh, vice versa. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very happy to accept it, yeah. Thank you so much, Ula. All right, well, that... I think that concludes our formalities. The um, Australian, the New South Wales branch of the Australian Lebanese Historical Society has a meeting now. Um, I think, uh, Munira, are we going to take a break or would you like us to? Uh, how does everybody feel about taking a break or could we keep going once we close the presentation and we move to our branch meeting? Is everyone happy to keep going? I think so. Okay. 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 So should, we, should we say goodbye to some people? And Ola, thank you so much. I come okay. from uh, I come from Nakura. I'm from Barsa and Tripoli, oh. and where the school you went to. So I'm very very familiar with what you were saying. 
I it was magic. It was magical before all this building. <laughs> Was I watched the river. magical, yeah. Yes, yes, and I saw the river with the photo you presented, the first photo, and brought back a lot of memory for me too. So it's wonderful having you, and hopefully we can meet again on a longer, you know, time thank where you. we we're not pushing the time so much. Thank you. So thank you again. Th thank you, Claude. Thank you, everyone, thank for attending. Thank you very much. It's a, thank such you. a pleasure. Bye -bye. Paula, I could just add a little thing to you for Tripoli, and uh, some of us will relate to this. I was there in 64, like your dad, and uh, you mentioned um, he was there in 64, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'll always remember being in the Burj, and they served mm. the pomegranate juice there. Oh, at, yeah. At man, and we'd be waiting for the buses, and they'd be calling out, Trablos, Trablos, Little River, <laughs> Little River. When you, got on, when you got on the bus to go to Trablos, along the way, somebody would hop on and serve lemon juice uh, to, to all the passengers. And that's something that's magnificent. It, it, it doesn't happen here. Thank you very much for all the memories. All right, thank you. All right, uh, thank you very much. I'll leave you to your branch thank meeting you. and uh, I'll be delighted to see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you Ula. Bye. Thanks Bye. again. Bye. So we invite the New South Wales members to stay on and Anne Monsu also as a as a guest. Uh, this is sort of like a general meeting uh, for the New South Wales members, uh, all the New South Wales members. And I will, and I'll hand it over back to you, Munira, but just to let them know that we're going to be discuss a project um, about the history of the Lebanese community in in the Canterbury area um, tonight. Mm -hmm. um, if any of our New South Wales members are staying on, this is one of our project we'll be discussing at our meeting. So if you wish to stay, please, you're most welcome to. Uh, if not, it's all good as well. So, um, uh, Yusuf, do you want to read the minute? Should we start with? Uh, yeah. Do, do you want to start with the acknowledgement of country, Munira? Uh, and if you like, yes. I um, acknowledge the traditional people of the land that we stand on today and pay my respect to elders past and present and welcome to... Um, all our members, and welcome to Anne joining us tonight. Um, thank you. It's been a great um, presentation and a nice to follow up with a meeting to discuss a couple of things about what we've got in the loop to start act on uh, very soon. So um, it's not going to be a long meeting. It's just we're discussing a few things about our project that we um planning for so um do you want me to um, start that for yusuf or would you like to do the business i'll i'll read the minutes uh for, first yeah first for people who weren't at the, our last meeting so yeah, just so sure. they're aware of where yeah, we're sure. at yes um the last meeting that we held was on the 11th of march 2024 and people who were at the meeting uh, were claude jack Janet, uh, Juju, Petronella, myself, Munira, and Teresa, and 